Hi everyone, it's your favourite ginger drag queen from England, Marcella Fox. I'm here today doing something a little bit different. I'm not going to be lip syncing or trying to sell you any gravel. I'm going to be doing a little makeup challenge slash tutorial of my own invention. Over the last few months, I've seen a few people ask what the absolute bare minimum essential makeup items are for doing a drag face. Um, when people are starting out in drag, a lot of the time they're not going to be able to afford the vast number of products that the average drag queen uses on their face on a regular basis. So I've decided to single out five things that you absolutely need and I'm going to attempt to do a face using just those five things because I don't want to be a hypocrite, I want to prove it can actually be done. So the five things that I believe are necessary are foundation and something to set it with, a powder contour kit, eyeliner, lip liner, and lashes. So I'm gonna try and do a look using just these things and I'll try and talk through what I'm doing as I do it. Wish me luck! Right, so I prep my skin. Um, I don't need to do anything with my brows because I actually use my natural brows. So I'm gonna go straight in with some foundation. I would recommend using stick foundation. I've got Krylon here. What you wanna do for this first stage is just Put it on your face, just in like little areas like this. You'll have to bear with me, this is my first time using a hand mirror. So yeah, the reason I'd recommend stick foundation is because you can just put it straight on your face and you know that it's going to be a creamy formula. So just make sure it's everywhere, pretty much. Um, just all over. Some queens put it on their neck. I would say if you're starting out, and just getting used to makeup, don't bother putting it anywhere where you don't need it, like your ears or your neck. Wait until you actually know what you're doing to do that. Then I'm going to blend it out with my finger. Um, I use my fingers because I feel like I've got the most control with my fingers. Um, and also, it helps to warm the makeup up, which will make it spread around the face better. So if you don't have um, the funds for Cryolan, then there's other other brands that work just as well. I've heard good things about Meron. The idea is to just completely coat your face in it. You want to get it in every crevice. One thing I do not understand when I watch makeup tutorials from drag queens on, online is they'll leave their cream foundation like this while they do something else and they'll, and they'll be emoting the whole time like this. And if I do that, look what happens. I get lines. And then the foundation moves out of those lines. And if I don't set it, like, immediately after I've applied it, then I'm stuck with those lines. Now, to set this, I'm actually going to be using baby powder. One of the reasons I recommend using baby powder is because it's cheap and it's readily accessible. So I start off by putting it on all those areas that I know are going to crease up. Just using a little powder puff and I'm just packing it in. Packing in. Leave it out. I've never actually used pure baby powder before. I've always mixed it with Collection 2000, which... These British queens, they know what I mean. We don't have Kothi Aspen here. God, try not to inhale this. Use a liberal amount and make sure that all the wet foundation is set and you don't need to be neat because you know what it's all going to get dusted off i wish i had a bigger powder puff and i could just get it all on a lot quicker and i'm just going to go all over my face one last time just make sure it's all super packed in as much as possible make sure you're dabbing like not not dabbing but dabbing you don't want to be dragging, because that ain't going to work, that ain't going to do shit. Okay, I get a nice fluffy brush and just dust that off. Okay. Okay, you should look something like this. Perhaps. Right, we're going to go in with some contouring. There's one particular contour palette I've seen on the market that I would 100% recommend and wish that I had when I was starting out drag. 
Um, I don't actually have it, but I have several of their other products, and so I can vouch for their quality. Um, and it's by Give Face Cosmetics, and it's called the Visage Palette. It is a contour palette with built-in blush and shimmer highlight as well. Um, and it's available in two different tones, so you can get one that's more apt for your skin tone. Um, it's got everything, um, but like I said, I don't have that, so I'm going to use my most similar components. Okay, so I'm going to start off with um, a contour tone. I'm using like a sort of medium to dark brown. So I'm going to be using a fluffy yet slightly angled brush like this. I'm going to just basically help myself to a bit of the product. Um, it's well used, this one, as you can see. And then I'm going to hold the brush like this so I can pinch it. I've got a bit more control over the shape. And basically I'm just going to go like this. Now I like to keep my makeup, including my contours, nice and soft. And quite diffused looking. Ordinarily I would have some kind of cream base under this to sort of guide where I'm putting things. But you know, when you're first starting off, that's one of the harder things to do. It's much easier to figure out with powder. And some queens like to do really harsh, straight lines. For me, it just, it doesn't work. Um, so I basically put them just under where my natural cheeks are. I've got quite pronounced cheekbones anyway, so I just sort of like to skim the underside of it. And that just really brings them out, exaggerates them. I've got quite feminine features on my face for the most part. Um, so for me, it's all about accenting them. And then I'm just going to bring that down without putting any more product on. And then I'm going to do the Matthew Anderson trademark beige rainbow, which is basically just putting a dark tone, the darkest tone, in an arc around your forehead. And that's going to blend down into the lighter tone in the middle. You can see the contours of my face starting to take shape now. I'd like it to be a little bit more exaggerated, so I'm going to actually go in with a darker brown as well. So I'm going to use it just at the very corners and then blend into it. Blend into what I've already done. See, so you can see already that is a lot darker. At least I hope you can. I have no idea how this lighting is holding up. Now I'm going to do my nose contour and my under chin contour. The same mid dark colour. Basically just buff it out either side and just sort of merge it into what's already there. And what this will do is it will basically look my lip. It will make my lower lip look plumper. I like to make my nose quite upturned. Because like I said, I've got a feminine nose as it is. It's very pointy. So I don't necessarily have a lot of re-sculpting to do. But also, if you've got a lot of makeup on the rest of your face, you can't just leave your nose blank. You've got to do something there. So I like to do something a little bit more unique with mine. This is why I'm using a straight brush, because... I want my contour to be very straight. One of the mistakes that I used to make when I was doing a nose contour is I used to coat like the whole of this part of my nose with powder and it it's, it ruins the illusion basically. just want a, a nice ombre along here. Sorry, I'm <laughs> conscious that you're not even going to be able to see what I'm doing half the time. And the same on the other side, so you just blend it down and then I'll take that darker brown and just go over the sort of very edges and blend them down. Okay, I'm I'm done contouring for now. I'm just gonna highlight. I've got another little stargazer guy and I'm just gonna get it all in the little powder puff that comes with it. Obviously, if you're using like a, a contour palette, then you'll have to provide your own powder puff. So this you can be more bold with because this you're going to dust off later. It's like, this is the part that I like to bake. And baking is, of course, when you just leave powder on your face, powder on your face to set. So if I'm doing fine areas, I just scrunch up the, the 
powder puff like this. And I'm, again, I'm not dragging, I'm gently tapping. Well, gently, but like firmly. Put plenty under my eyes and I always make sure to get like where my brow bone is and then right in the middle in a big sort of semicircle. So for the eyes, I'm gonna show you how to cut a crease using only lip liner and your contour colors that you have. So I'm just gonna dust off any highlight that is stuck around here. I've got a lip liner pencil. It's actually a multi-purpose pencil, and this one's from Give Face Cosmetics. It's in a sort of darkish brown. You want to use a tone that is darker than your skin tone. Um, obviously, you can use whatever colour you want, but the reason I'm using brown is so that I can use this on different points throughout my face. The biggest thing that I need to make sure to do is to keep it round. One of my pet peeves in drag makeup is when someone's tried to do it round and it looks sort of round from the front and they'll turn this way and it'll be like a straight up line and then like an arc here. I think it looks so bad. Um, and the way that I've worked out how to do this, for my own face at least, is to make it more round than you think it needs to be. I still stay looking directly forward. but I basically just make it more circular than, you see, it's, it's still round. It's not like up and down, like a weird curved triangle. And I basically just start this at the edge of my contour, where my contour for my nose went up to, almost touching slash touching my brows. I'm just doing this lightly for now because I want to make sure it's even once you're happy with it, then you can go over a bit darker. Okay, so that's what it looks like at this point. Now I'm gonna take a fluffy brush. This one, no, not that one. Actually, no, actually, the one that I picked out there. So this guy, nice and fluffy, and I'm gonna take that brown that I've been using all over my face and just sort of like apply it around the edge of that line that we've just made. What this will do a little bit is set the liner because the liner isn't completely dry it's it's a little bit tacky and so much of the eye is literally just following that arc with different tones if like me using your natural eyebrows then don't be afraid to go into the eyebrow okay so it's just a little bit buffed out but not majorly um i'm gonna use that dark dark brown that i put on the corners of my face and this is going to hopefully show a bit more of a difference. Yeah, so you can see that's a lot closer to the lip liner that I used to draw. Don't be too afraid of going into the middle of the arc because we're going to go over that later anyway. It's much better to do lots and lots of small, delicate, gentle strokes than, than just scrape it across and then and then you're like, oh shit, can't blend it. And you can just join it up to the nose contour. That is something a lot of drag queens do. Okay, so it's looking a bit more sculpted. A bit more contrast, it's gradually getting built up. Now that is the darkest color that I have on my contour palette. But as I know that other contour palettes will have darker colors than that brown, I am going to slightly cheat and use a little bit of black eyeshadow. I'm just gonna use a little bit of black eyeshadow and just put it in the edge. I'm using a different brush for this because I want to be precise. So I'm using a little angled straight brush like this. Just use the darkest colour. I would have been fine with this, but I just want to demonstrate the importance of having contrast in your face. And, you know, it is standard to, to use a bit of black on your eye. Now that brush that I put down earlier and decided against using, I'm going to get that now. This guy. Get a bit of that black and just pummel it and blend it out in very small strokes. Going along that same arc and then get the brown, the dark brown, and just sort of gradually, very gradually bring it out to make a sort of nice little gradient. See, this brush is very stiff. 
because it's very short but what that does do is it gives me control don't be afraid to just go back in with the lighter colour and just sort of fluff it out gently a bit more You'll notice as well that I'm using all mattes. If you've got like a contour kit, that's one advantage of this is they should all be matte because anything that is um, shimmery is just going to counteract the the shadows that you're trying to create with these colours. Okay, I'm happy with that. So you can see now that the inner bit of this is diffused while we've done that. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my white powder and this is the brush that I like to use. It's flat and thick, but it's rounded. And I'm just gonna get a bunch of white on the end of that and just press it in. And that will cut that line, make it nice and sharp. Um, some people would do this with creams. I'd, I'll be honest, I'd rather lay down a little bit of grease paint or something here just to get it to stick. You can use your foundation, but Ideally, I'd use a lighter foundation, which I'm not permitting myself the use of for this tutorial. I'm going to do some liner. So you, there's lots of different types of liner. You can get pencil liner, you can get ink liner, pen liner, gel liner. I'm going to use this guy, which is a nice little felt tip. Lots of brands do these. I just make a nice wing. So I do, I've got quite hooded eyes. So I actually skim a lot of the hood of my eye. I don't go over the whole lot like I used to. Because I found that even when I did that, if I blinked, it would still transfer. Um, so I'm going to do the same on the other side. I like to go out carefully, not too far. And then out from the inner corner and then I like to join it up from this side okay that's sort of even um, I'm just going to go and do the inner corner as well I have a huge problem with transfer on the inner corners of my eyes so I bring it right underneath there so that if I blink I don't need to worry about I know that it's already black there basically I don't need to worry about any of the product transferring to somewhere I don't want it to be. Okay, so it's a proper cat eye. <laughs> People always say, we're gonna do a nice cat eye. And they'll do like a tiny little wing on the corner. This is a real fucking cat eye. If I was permitting myself multiple, I would use a pencil on the water lines. Now you remember we put some powder under our cheeks? Before I do my under eyes, I'm just gonna dust that off. So yeah, we're just gonna use those same brown tones um, and just sort of like lightly put it underneath with our fluffy, fluffy, fluffy brush. And then I'm just going to gently buff it out a bit. My brows, I always use lip liner. So I'm going to use that same lip liner we used to cut the crease. I'm just going to follow my natural brows and create a shape. I mean, one thing, when you use your natural brows, it's a lot easier to get your eyebrows even. Because they're already on your face. I'm never using a hand mirror again. I'm never going to do one of these tutorials again. God. Okay, well, these are not even. They don't even look slightly good. Well, one side looks nice. We're just going to take all our photos from this side from now on, if that's okay with you guys. Yeah. So I'm just trying to get it in all the hairs. This is why I use a lip liner as well, personally, is because because I do use my natural brows. Um, lip liner is quite gunkier. And if you use like an eyeliner pencil, it's not going to integrate with the eyebrow hairs nearly as well. Um, I need a new brush. So for my brows, I use the tiniest, tiniest brush like this. And I get my same, this is actually the dark brown. And I just pack it in and set that and just make it look a little bit better. Just stroke it with the direction of the hairs. It's time for lashes. So for eyelashes, I'm using Duo. So while I'm waiting for this to sort of 
get a little bit tacky, I'm just going to dust off the rest of my face. So all that highlight that we put around, we're just going to diffuse it, buff it off with our fluffiest brush, the one that we brushed off our setting powder with. Right, so I've got my lashes. I use very small lashes because I've <laughs> my my drag makeup tends to err uh, on the uh, on the less exaggerated side of things. And then I just plunk them straight on. You see, if the glue is too wet, it's just gonna slide around on the eye. You want it to be tacky so that it adheres. I'm just taking it and just putting it straight on basically, looking down my nose at it. If you need to blink, just to make sure that you've moved your fingers out of the way. Okay, those are pretty even actually for me. So if I put mascara on, I'd be sticking them to my lashes using the mascara. It looks a little bit weird, but I think it's more owing to the fact that I don't have any eyeliner on my upper waterline. Okay, and our eyes are done. So now I am going to do a little bit more contouring. And this is where I get very, I use very, very light strokes, but I keep them big. You don't want a whole lot of product on the brush for this. You want to keep it subtle and floaty so that you can properly blend it. So you can have as much contrast as you want. Um, if you're painting for stage, you will generally have quite a bit of contrast. But I, I don't paint for stage. I paint for a very small YouTube watching audience. Now I mentioned earlier that the Give Face Visage palette contains blush, so I am going to use a little bit of blush and I'm literally just dabbing a round fluffy brush into it and I'm just going to go like this and just dot it on the apples of my cheeks. Make sure I've got the same amount on each side. As you can see it looks fucking mental and then I'm just going to gently buff it out and I just wanted to do this to demonstrate how much difference a little bit of blush can make. You don't want to look like Neapolitan ice cream so you don't want it like stripy you just want it a nice gentle glow. Right I think it's time for lips. Now you can do a lip using just lip liner and that's what I'm going to do on this occasion. I'm going to go in with that same lip liner that we use for our brows and our crease cutting. I'm going to sharpen it. You want this to be as sharp a line as possible. So I, like a lot of drag queens, overdraw my lips. I like to start here. I just do a line pretty much straight across. And I just, if you get any sort of little bubbles of um, product, just brush them off with your fingers. And just make sure you're even on both sides. This side's a little bit more rounded, so I'm going to round this side a bit more. Okay, so that's the top lip pretty much outlined. And then for the bottom, this is going to look a little bit counterproductive when I do it, but it works for me. I purse my lips. It does create ridges, but it helps me get the shape a lot better. And now I do this shape. <laughs> Just caught my facial expression in the mirror and it's crazy. Okay. I sort of pull my lip over my teeth like that. And I just sort of connect the lines. Keep checking what it looks like with your mouth relaxed because that's what it's going to look like when your face is relaxed and that's what's most important. So I'm just going to fill in the hole up with the pencil basically. And if you use just lip liner then it will be very matte typically. Which is a good thing for lips, especially if you're overdrawing. Okay, and once it's all covered just tidy up the edges. Make sure your corners are nice and crisp. The give face Visage palette has a little highlight strip at the top, so I'm just going to use a little bit of my own highlight. I highlight in an unusual way, 
but it works for me. So we're not going to discriminate. Um, I actually use this brush. <laughs> the one that I use for my um, white bits on my eyes. I put a little bit of highlighter on them and I just basically put, put the highlight anywhere that I want to just bring a little bit more attention to. So under, well I mean I don't really want to bring much more attention to under the eyebrows because it's awful. It's the worst part of this makeup. Nose, definitely. See, I like to create a little sort of strip for my nose. It gives a sort of like upturned effect that I quite like. You see where I drew the shadow here? I put highlight just underneath it. I'm not very good at doing the whole skimming thing that people do with the big fan brush. It's never worked for me, what can I say? Just a little bit here as well. And I am happy with that. I think I'm about done. Right, I think it's about time I got changed into the look so we can see how it's all come together properly. And here we have it, the finished look. I've got my little Victoria Beckham bob on. Um, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. I, it's not my usual because obviously I'm usually a redhead. I usually have a lot more color going on and I would love just a little bit more contrast around the eyes. So I think for me personally, or anyone with my complexion, the next step things that I would add on to these initial foundation products um, would be mascara, um, some black eye pencil in the waterline, um, and then something just to get a little bit more contrast on the crease in particular. But I'm happy with the rest of it. I'm even happy with the lip liner lip um, and the sort of nudeness of it all. It's very not my sort of thing, but I think in this situation it works. I'm glad that I granted myself permission to use blush, because without that I think I would just look really brown and boring. But I think that just wakes up my face a bit. Um, so yeah, there we go. That is how you do a face using just one foundation colour, plus something to set it. A dry contour palette, eyeliner, lip liner and lashes. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Please let me know what you think of it. Please tell me if it's something you'd like me to do again. Not that I probably will. Um, and I will see you hopefully soon for something else. Mwah. Bye.